So I'm here with Bob Roth. Bob, thank you for uh, joining us. You just came out with a new book, Strength and Stillness, which uh, really describes your path and also transcendental meditation and people's experiences that, with that. So I thought maybe we could start just by uh, talking about for somebody who's new and hasn't had experience with transcendental meditation, uh, how do you describe it in a nutshell? Well, the key word is transcendental, which means tra transcend, which means to go beyond, to settle. In this case, I use the analogy of an ocean. We have choppy waves on the surface, but the depth of the ocean is silent, and the mind is similar. The surface of our mind is the monkey mind, or the gotta, 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 gotta mind, frantic mind. But the hypothesis is that every human being deep within them right now has a level of the mind, a transcendent level of the mind that is already calm and settled and peaceful and wide awake and the source of our creativity. And transcendental meditation is a simple, natural, effortless technique where you use a mantra, but you don't concentrate on it. You're taught how to use it in an effortless way like a, that's like a catalyst that allows the mind, the thinking mind, to access that inner uh, peace, calm, yeah. power. And then when that happens, the whole brain wave, brain signature changes, and the body gains its deep state of rest, and you get re feel rejuvenated. It's done 20 minutes twice a day, mm -hmm. once in the morning and once in the afternoon. And the thing that I like about it is there's no belief, mm -hmm. and there's a ton of research to show that it works. Now, in our current age where thousands and thousands of people each day are, are downloading apps and different techniques and watching uh, various uh, videos, what seems to be unique about TM is that there's a student-teacher relationship. Can you talk about what that role is and why For that? For that ability, to, it, there are many different approaches to meditate, and some meditations can be taught online, they can be taught in groups. Transcendental meditation, for that ability to sit comfortably, close your eyes, and just turn the attention within, and like a dive, like gravity, your agitated mind settles down. Anyone can do it. A 10-year-old child with ADD can do it, but it takes about an hour one-to-one -one with a teacher and not in a group. So if I, if I teach you, yeah. you have a question, I answer, you have a question. And then when you've got it, Soren, you've got it. Mm -hmm. But it, there's nothing replaces that one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. And so your question is answered immediately. And then when you learn TM, you then have a mentor or a meditation mm -hmm. teacher for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And is there something about that relationship? Do you feel like there's something about getting it versus over the phone because you're sitting with them live? Yeah. Is there something? Yeah, in the it's an interesting that... thing because it's two sides. So um, I learned this when I was 18. I learned this almost 49 years ago. I was a skeptical 18 year old kid at the University of California at Berkeley, mm -hmm. chaos everywhere, and uh, very skeptical. And a friend of mine said, Well, you should learn this. And I said, not into meditation and he said it's good you just try it and it was so immediate and worked so well that I decided I want to teach it to inner city school kids but to answer your question um, my teacher who was a lovely woman barely spoke English mm. and she taught me over those four days perfectly and I've been meditating ever since so it isn't like I had to have a cosmic connection mm -hmm. it's a passing on information this transcendental meditation is ancient, over 5,000 years old, an unbroken tradition of being taught personally, teacher to te student, teacher to student. And so yes, there's a, an importance of this, but then once you have a certified teacher, then they can teach anyone whether there's a deep connection or not. Great. And I know from you, you people might know you from teaching a lot of the celebrities and a lot of the, uh, the notables in our society, but when I talk to you, you're most excited about your work with in uh, at-risk schools, your work with in prisons. Can you talk a little bit about well, yeah. why that is so? Well, the thing is, I was sort of raised that way. And when I was in high school, I worked for Bobby Kennedy. And I wanted to, those days, wanted to change the world. Yeah. So I had this deep passion. And I thought politics, political change, public policy was the way, in a mass way, that you could affect social transformation. And I really wanted equity, equality under the law, and equal opportunity. And then politics sort of lost its fascination at Berkeley in 1968 mm -hmm. and 69. And I shifted to education. And I thought, OK, that transformation will take place one at a time. I'd write educational mm -hmm. curriculum. And then a child would be equipped with the tools to sort of and the knowledge to make it through life. And then when I learned to meditate, I thought one of my first thoughts was, Soren, not, oh, I'm going to get enlightened. It was, oh, this is what I want to teach to kids. Wow, you knew. I knew in 1969. So I became a teacher. I studied with Maharishi in 1972, and I taught and taught and taught, and then all over the world. And then 
12 and a half years ago, David Lynch and I, the great filmmaker, was a longtime meditator. We got together and started a foundation with the purpose was to raise the funds so that we could bring this for free to not just inner city school kids, but women who are survivors of domestic mm -hmm. violence and veterans and help prevent the opioid addiction. And a lot of these people you're talking about, Jerry Seinfeld, Hugh Jackman, who learn on their own, they very genu generously come forward to help fundraise so we can teach this to people for free. Mm -hmm. And what is it about that work that you feel, because uh, if, if there's transformation a business leader or a, a notable, that's nice. But when I hear you talk about, oh, there was this child and this child. Core of my life, I don't yeah. know. It's just the core of my, the way I was raised. <clears throat> I, I tell people when I was growing up my, in the Bay Area, my family was so political. We just talked about political transformation and politics and debating Nixon and you know Goldwater and Johnson and Kennedy. <clears throat> and I told this at a talk I gave last night, I said that I knew I was a Democrat before I knew I was Jewish. <laughs> so social transformation, that has been my yeah. passion. And I thought, okay, I'll be like Bobby Kennedy and we'll pass laws. But then... I thought, you're never going to heal the soul of the nation through political parties. They're so divisive. And then I thought, okay, education. And in a way, what I'm doing is sort of educational, equipping the child with the tools to be able to wake up her or his brain, mm -hmm. overcome and heal the trauma that they're living yeah. with. So I don't know why, except yeah, that it no, just it's my yeah. passion. Got it, got it. Other and people can teach those guys. I sure. want to teach these guys. And um, so, so in terms of the divisions that exactly happen in the political world, sometimes those can happen, I've noticed, in, in the mindfulness and meditation world. And I'm wondering if you have thoughts on that. You can, all of a sudden, two people can begin along, and it's like, well, I practice mindfulness, well, I practice TM. And it's like, all of a sudden, there's a division uh, that can easily come, or they practice Zen, or they practice whatever. How do you view it's that? It's a sadness to me. Thoughts? It's a sadness to me. It's so unnecessary. There are legitimate tools. There are legitimate techniques. They have different outcomes. So if I'm doing, according to research, there's three basic types of meditation. You can see that in the way the brain functions, and it's based on approaches or mechanics. So there's techniques called focused attention where you concentrate and you control the mind. It's like trying to stop waves on the surface of the ocean, and that creates something called gamma brain waves, 20 to 50 cycles per second You're working. It's a cognitive process, clear, clear the mind of thoughts. There's a second approach, open monitoring. Many mindfulness techniques are involved in this body scans, breathing techniques. I do those. I've been doing TM for almost 50 years. I do those. They come in handy. And that creates something called um, theta brain waves, which are sort of pre-onset dream, six to eight cycles per second. And then there's self-transcending. And that gives, rather than attending to here, it attends or gives attention or access to that silence. And that has a whole different constellation of brainwave changes. My feeling is they work beautifully together mm -hmm. and we should not be siloing. Right. We should, when I do TM, I don't do mindfulness and when I do mindfulness, I don't do TM. I, they have their own integrity, but particularly with kids, it's a tough world out there. Yeah. Give them the tools yeah. to deal with those things. Yeah. And you said, if it doesn't work, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I mean, don't, you know, yeah, just yeah. try it. But the other thing, and it comes back to the question of, of, um, individual teacher, I feel that the problems mm -hmm. that we face right now, the trajectory we're on as a society and individually, it ain't getting any better. Yeah, no. The stress, the anxiety, the tension, the fear, the uncertainty, politically, economically, socially, and those are real uh, experiences. Yeah. And you wouldn't, or I wouldn't, if I had some organic physical disease, I wouldn't just go online and just dabble or my best friend says, we'll try this, I'd want to go to a certified doctor, you know, I'd like to go to, a, and then have a prescription, a diagnosis and a prescription, and I feel we should treat meditation the yeah. same. Yeah, so you should really uh, Look research, into it, find, research, yeah. find out, is it a certified teacher? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, time is precious, yeah. and we're taking five or 10 minutes out to do some, some meditation, or in the case of TM, 15 to 20 minutes, is precious. Be sure you're making maximum use of your time. If you have an organic ailment, you don't just dabble. Oh, I'll take this little pill. It looks like every other little pill. Yeah. At least that's my upbringing. Yeah, I like yeah, science. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah, science. Yeah. Um, and so how do you I see... I like the science of spirituality. That's what I like. I like the science, the science. of consciousness, okay. the science of spirituality. And effective. Yes, thoughtful. effective. Yes. Yeah. And so how do you see yourself moving forward? You just have the book out. David Lynch Foundation is growing. 
is there something on the horizon that you're wanting to expand into? What is? What well, we're continuing to work with these at-risk populations, which means um, the, uh, healing the hidden wounds of trauma. Mm -hmm. wow. And so that's, but what I really want to do, since I'm getting older, uh -huh. is I would like, right now we're working to um, raise the funds or inspire the funds to do large scale, they call them phase three clinical trials, mm -hmm. thousand or more veterans. Mm -hmm and doing TM and comparing it to other, other forms of meditation or you know, control or things like pro prolonged exposure. Let's really see mm -hmm. what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Because if I may say, the pharmaceutical company has a huge grip yeah. on any of these treatment programs. Yeah. And the only reason is they're able to fund large yeah. trials and yeah. there hasn't been those large trials. So That's I want great. to do that with veterans. I want to do that with kids. I want to do 10,000 kids. And it's not just like veterans, a thousand veterans, 250 veterans in Birmingham, Alabama, mm -hmm. 250 veterans in Spokane, 200, you know, in different areas yeah. so you can show the demographics. And then what happens is then we get government funding. Yeah. And then I'm not having to spend all my time yeah. or other begging right. wealthy people to fund, but right. already gazillions of dollars are going from the government to pay for these medications. Yeah, right. Why right. not a part of it just go to pay for meditation right. that's proven to work? So that's right. my goal. And has yeah, it's moving. many of the, no, of no. the side effects. No, and no side effects. And we, David Lynch Foundation has now opened an office on Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. So I'm teaching members of Congress on both sides of the aisle. I'm teaching right. leaders in the VA, leaders in the Department of Education. They're coming to me. Mm -hmm. And then they know what it is. Because you don't have, we, nobody has the gazillion dollar lobbying. Yeah. You know, with these companies <laughs> that they're paid. But when they learn to meditate, then they say, oh, and then they see this phase three clinical trial. We could change the world, yeah. and it could be part part and parcel of, of that's society. That's so beautiful. that's my goal. I love it. I love it. I think we're almost out And of not time. just TM. Any right. other thing that's shown right. to work. Right. Anything that's shown evidence-based, right. repeated, randomized control trial, right. peer-reviewed, published right. in top journals. Let's go right. for it. And it's almost we're at the place now, I, I think Eckhart Tolle says, uh, we have one choice, we either evolve or perish. And I think a lot of people are feeling that, right? Like there is this trajectory where we, we pretty much perish, whether it's economic perish or society stress perish, or there's this other choice of, of evolve. And what does that look like? And our resources have to match. It, it, we can't yes. be continuing to put all resources into one path and not supporting the other path. Yeah, and I think, um, I think the thing that's going to destroy us first is that buildup of stress and trauma, which yeah. clouds decisions, which clouds discernment. We don't make the right choices. Yeah. We take the drugs. We get anxious. Yeah. You know, suicide is on the rise. Yeah. Opioid addictions are all these things fueled ultimately yeah. by stress, political divisions. Yeah. So I think it's a frightening time. But they say the darkest hour is before the dawn. Uh, it's really sweet. Well, thank you for everything you do. And it's, thank uh, for every, it's excuse me. This man is a great human being. I've been following his work <laughs> for years. You've been thank a lone you. voice for a very long time. Now you're getting more and more people, and it's an honor to be with you and thank work you. with you. Thank you. Likewise.